Hi, my name is Bruce Brigatio from the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. In this video, we will speak with Axel Moore from the University of Delaware. Axel will be talking about his award-winning poster presentation titled, A Simple Analytical Model for Biphasic Materials. So biphasic materials. Um, I'm going to talk about cartilage mainly in this. Um, I like to think of cartilage like a sponge. It's got a solid phase and a fluid phase, and both of them are capable of supporting load. Um, and so what we've done is we've developed an equation that shows how much of the load is supported by fluid and how much of the load is supported by solid. And if you think of a hydrodynamic bearing, everything is supported by fluid pressure. So um, what we would call the fluid load fraction, the fraction of the load that's supported by fluid to the total applied load would, e would equal one. And so that equation is shown here as your fluid load support fraction, which again, like I said, is just the fluid pressure support over the total contact load. Um, the elastic load is solved by Hertz's theory, and we solved Darcy's law to get the fluid load support. And so what we assume uh, for our model is that in cartilage we have semicircular flow arcs, and that the um, elastic portion of the modulus is basically the cartilage without any fluid in it. How does it respond if it doesn't have the fluid? And what we find is that cartilage is terrible. If you don't account for the fluid phase, cartilage would fail within days. It has huge wear coefficients, um, huge friction coefficients, obviously, that has great wear. Um, so this fluid, flay, this fluid phase is very um, uh, a needed material property. Um, and so this is what our model accounts for. And what we come down to is an equation that is fluid load support. The amount of load supported by fluid pressure is equal to Peckley number over Peckley plus one times E star over E star plus one. And Peckley number is defined up here as velocity times the contact area over aggregate modulus over permeability, um, or as a function of indentation rate. And the basic idea here is, if you imagine running over water, if you run fast enough, you won't sink into the water. If you run slow enough, you're gonna sink into the water and you'll hit the bottom. And so the idea is, if you move the cartilage contacts quick enough in your joints in these uh, in situ type measurements, if you're moving quick enough, then you're not gonna defeat this fluid load support property if you beat that idea of the fluid moving out of the joint contact, moving out from under you as you're running across the water. And so that's the idea. We test these conditions in physiologically relevant speeds. Um, contact areas are a little bit smaller, but the idea is that we're moving quick enough that we're not defeating the fluid load support property and we're maintaining um, this interstitial fluid pressurization mechanism. And so what I show here is healthy cartilage with a fluid load support of 90.7%. And so that means 90% of your load is supported by fluid pressure and 10% is supported by the elastic matrix. And so if you think of the only things in cartilage cartilage context is causing friction or solid on solid interactions, that means you have 10% uh, solid on solid interaction. Um, versus degraded cartilage where you show a 73.6%, you have a substantially greater amount of solid on solid interactions, increase in friction. And so that is shown here as a direct measurement also where your friction coefficient in healthy cartilage is about 0.016, where in degraded cartilage you have a friction coefficient of about 0.066. Um, and so that is definitely a um, uh, few factors higher. Now if you look at hydrogels, a material that we want to design or tailor to cartilage mechanics, um, right now it's nowhere near the needed parameters. It doesn't support load through fluid pressurization, not substantially. Um, what we show is that fluid pressurization can support 21.8% of the load in typical hydrogels. And these are things like contact lenses. Um, and what we get for uh, friction coefficients are 0.2. And that's a whole order of magnitude of what healthy cartilage operates at. And so what we believe is that by boosting the fluid load support properties, by getting that number up to 90%, we'll effectively reduce the effective friction coefficient. Um, and this is how we operate in physiological joints. And so our parameter that we need to design to and the parameter that fails in osteoarthritic joints, people that damage their joints, um, is this value of E star. And E star is shown in our equation, as I stated before, um, it's the tensile to compressive modulus ratio. And so it's just simply pulling on the, uh, the cartilage matrix um, in tension versus compression. And what you get is, um, in healthy cartilage, an E star of about 9.75. Um, in degraded cartilage, you get about 2.79. So this value is dropping severely compared to a hydrogel that's at 0.3. And so this is the material property that we want to design 
um, hydrogels to and what is happening in osteoarthritic and degraded cartilage that's causing it to fail. It's losing this tensile property and it's no longer obtaining this large tensile to compressive modulus ratio. And so that's just shown here um, with fluid load support versus sliding velocity. Um, this is on a log chart, but what you see is that healthy cartilage obtains a very high fluid load fraction where your degraded cartilage obviously is a little bit below it, um, about 80% versus 90 to 95%. And then your um, hydrogels are only around your 20, 21% mark. And so our design for hydrogels, uh, looking at this chart, in gray we have hydrogel. In white, uh, many people try and design hydrogels by increasing the permeability, decreasing the permeability, increasing aggregate modulus, or decreasing aggregate modulus. And just a short idea of what those two do is shown here. All it does is it, sh it affects the rate at which you obtain maximum fluid load support. It doesn't affect your maximum value. Um, so shown here, this, these dots eventually come out to this asymptotic position that's the same as a typical hydrogel. You've done nothing but change the rate of ascent. If you actually double E star, you actually shift your maximum asymptote. If you do it by eight times, you're really getting close to physiological values. And then if you get up to 9.75, you'll actually reach physiological values. And so this is our aim, this is what we really want to do with hydrogel materials, this is how we want to design them. And this is why we think cartilage breaks down, is this E star factor. And so here I show a degradation process just through electron micrographs. And so right here, we've got healthy cartilage, and then this spot here is a zoom in of this. Um, and it's a pretty boring surface. It's and no different looking under a microscope, it's pretty much a blob, um, nothing unique. But if you go through and you give it a blunt impact injury, you can think of um, high loading to maybe a car accident where your joints really get compressed and really um, try and need, they need to relieve stresses. They create surface fissures um, and this collagen network that's in that helps keep everything together, that tensile modulus, ends up fissuring just on the surface layer. And so that then breaks down your fluid load support. In just doing a surface fissure, you go from 86% fluid load support to about 82%. And that's without going through, I mean, you're not doing really anything but just taking a blunt impact object. You're not roughing up the surface, you're just fissuring the surface. That's all you're doing. You're degrading that E-star property. And so this here is a picture of that blunt impact. And then this image here is just a zoom in of that. And now for a biological breakdown process, because I am dealing with a biological material, um, it has cells in it, and these cells are capable of releasing enzymes that naturally go into your cartilage and break the cartilage down. This is a good and bad thing. Um, for our cases right now, it's a bad thing. And so what I showed here, over 33 days of a cartilage degradation process, you get pronounced collagen fibers showing up in the top layer of your cartilage. Um, this increases friction, but more so it's decreasing the fluid load support. And so that's why your friction is going up, because all that load is being transferred to the solid matrix. Um, and so what you can see by zooming in on this image, you can really see the defined collagen fibers, which are like rope structures. And then if you go in and you give a blunt impact injury to this degraded, um, unfunctional cartilage now, you turn it into pulp. And this is just two images of what zoomed in cartilage looks like once you've really annihilated it. And so that's essentially what my poster here shows. And yeah, that's my uh, model for osteoarthritis and hydrogels. You can find more videos like Axel's by visiting the STLE website at www.stle.org.